Good morning, I'm Lou Goodman. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about some of the high endurance capabilities and uh, aspects of, of a high endurance knife, uh, the Goodman Combat Knife, uh, as we had uh, discussed earlier. So I designed this knife in, you know, uh, in mind with um, a military application, a law enforcement application, and also uh, for the civilian user. So I based a lot of uh, the design aspects on my hand forge blades and uh, um, of different uses of a knife that I have seen uh, over my 24 years of military service. So as you see, we got a vehicle here and we're gonna use this as the medium today to uh, demonstrate some of these capabilities. So first off, let's talk about uh, um, what is a good use for this knife? So some of the things um, in uh, military and law enforcement or in the civilian world, uh, you just wanna extract somebody from a vehicle. Um, whether you have uh, rolled off an abatement, you're in a wreck, whatever, if you wanna get the seat belt off, most of the time you gotta have a good knife, whether that's a fixed blade uh, or a rescue knife of some sort, you gotta be prepared. So this knife allows you to do that. First and foremost, we always gotta think about safety, right? So eyewear and gloves. And please don't try this at home on your own. So a lot of times getting somebody out of a seat belted car, uh, if you're a, a law enforcement, you may have done this quite a bit or military, but your average Joe just has, has never tried to attempt this. So, you know, it's just really loose and obviously there's gonna be a person in here. So you don't wanna move the knife toward the person. So you wanna to try to cut down or away uh, from the individual in the car. Some of the times you can grab it and as long as you tighten it up, it's gonna cut well. So I can grab it right here. I can cut up and away. I could go down here to the waist and cut down in a way. You're gonna get your most superior grip by utilizing the guard with an upwards cut. So my seat belt is tight. I can pull up and out. That's away from the individual inside. Seat belt's released and the individual can be extracted. So really good use for that right there. Just remember those safety aspects. Don't cut toward the individual pull toward you, up and out. So moving on, um, we're gonna move into the, uh, the rear of the vehicle here. And uh, some of the stuff I've seen over the years uh, in my military uh, career, you may have to search a vehicle. Obviously this isn't gonna roll over to your civilian life, but you'll get some of the high endurance aspects of the knife anyway. Um, so a lot of times the bad guys will hide stuff all over the vehicle, in the door panels, in the glove box, obviously. Uh, they'll sew stuff into the carpet. Uh, so they'll pull everything out, hide something, any type of contraband, and then try to re, uh, reboot the vehicle to where it's unnoticeable so they can make it through checkpoints. So obviously this would be a good, uh, a good use also for your law enforcement uh, crew. So we're going to cut into the uh, door panels, we're going to cut into the seats, and we're going to cut into the carpet, and then we're going to pry some stuff with this knife and uh, uh, really get into some work with it. Some of the uh, great aspects of this knife, uh, you know, with the uh, elongated Ricasso, and all the uh, uh, scalloped edges, everything's rounded. Uh, you notice I have gloves on, but you might find yourself without gloves. I can choke up on the knife without getting cut by the blade. So I can make a big knife a small knife. I can even choke up even higher for finer work. We talked about for some of the uh, applications for uh, skinning game and whatnot. So I can take a big knife and make it a small knife. <sighs> for searching vehicles, this really works well too because I can control the knife and whatever I think I might find in there, I don't want to damage it. If it's uh, uh, some sort of sensitive, uh, uh, um, sensitive gear, computer uh, uh, hard drives or anything like that, or thumb drives, you know, I just, I just want to be cramming this point through it. So I'm not willy-nilly going to go in here and just start stabbing the seat. Uh, so I want to cut the seams out with a pretty, uh, pretty good precision. And uh, the features of this knife with the elongated Ricasso allows me to do that and not get cut by choking up on the knife. Notice during this, when I need to turn my hand different way, I can choke up on the knife, use the guard again, cut the knife away from me. So any any uh, 
any angle, the knife's really gonna work for me and keep my hands safe. Changing up again, finger in front of the guard. So basically I've cut the, uh, the top off the seat and now I can really get into the meat potatoes of searching this vehicle. Get into the foam. Still using the delicate cutting part of the knife. And the foam comes right out. Some cars it'll be sewn in. Some cars you just gotta get it going and then rip it out the rest of the way. Then I can complete my search. Uh, I can cut into the cushion, see if they've uh, you know, glued that back together. You might be something, searching for something as small as a thumb drive, any type of uh, uh, small device that could have information on it. So it's something to think about. You gotta use this knife carefully. All these attributes let you do that. All right, moving on. Okay, in the last couple of tests, we talked about the finer points of how to handle the knife uh, as far as how to hold it. I can take uh, a thumb on top approach on top of the spine. I can choke up on the knife above the guard because the ricasso is uh, elongated and unsharpened. I can take a, a big knife and make it an even smaller knife by taking my middle finger, go in front of the guard, really choking up on the knife. So I got my forefinger on the top directing the, the blade and I've got my middle finger in the ricasso area which is extended and my uh, third and fourth finger is still on the handle. So I've got really good control of this knife and, and, and finer points. I'm trying not to damage anything. Uh, it goes back to like, uh, you know, I want to stress also, uh, you know, the first test we did with the seat belt cut and then cutting into the cushions and the next test we're going on to, these are an extremist test. We're, you know, uh, we're not going to uh, cut the seat belt if we can hit the button and take it off. We're not going to cut the door panel off uh, on your personal vehicle looking for your, you know, if your kid's trying to hide his, uh, his gummy bears. These are military law enforcement applications in extremist times uh, when you really need this blade in an emergency. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the strength capabilities of this knife. Okay, it's PD-1 steel and it's been uh, differentially hardened. What that means is the spine and the middle section as, is at a certain rock roll rating of uh, around 33 and the cutting edge has been differentially hardened down up to a 59 Rockwell. So it makes this knife super strong and it's been, it's been uh, tempered six times over the course of all those treatments. And it's a full tang knife, as you can see, uh, as we uh, discussed before. So it's a very strong knife. You can pry with this knife. This is primarily a cutting tool. Secondary and tertiary, it can be used to pry with. And that's why it was designed based on, like I said before, a lot of the experiences I've seen over, over my military career. Uh, back to searching a vehicle, military law, law enforcement applications. If you wouldn't mind, bring the camera up here. So we got to get these door panels off. I don't want to carry a bunch of heavy tools, uh, you know, hooligan tools, hammers, pry bars. So I'm literally going out the door with my personal protection gear, my kit, my helmet, my weapon, my night vision, and then I want this knife with me on my kit. So I've got to finish the search of this vehicle, so I want to pry some stuff off here. I've done this hundreds of times. Uh, in the Middle East looking for uh, contraband in vehicles. Like I said, this could uh, very well, very easily flow over into law enforcement searches. So I'm always looking how to save my knife. So I'm, I'm always, primarily it's a cutting tool, so I want to save the cutting edge. It'll take a lot of abuse, but it won't cut two inches of steel in half. So I'm always trying to protect the cutting edge. The rest of the knife, I'm just using as a tool. So I want to get it in somewhere pretty pretty easily and I'm using the back of the spine to, to pry and keep the blade keep the blade off of uh, off of metal as in with all car doors there's always a bunch of metal inside so if I can just get a purchase a lot of those can be pried off I'm easing the tip in using it to pry getting a bite Getting that down, pried some plastic and metal there. No tip deformation, uh, nothing going on there. Still good to go. Working my way around. Get the knife in there, give me some purchase. A lot of times in military and law enforcement, they're using a hooligan tool for this. So what I'm using is 
my force of my hands and my shoulders, but I'm really just using the knife to get purchase on these points. And most of the time, once I've achieved that purchase all the way around, this will come right off. A little bit of help. Got a couple screws there. So now I can start doing all the finer work. This is a late 90s model American vehicle. These are designed a lot different than foreign vehicles, so you, you could see a whole mass of different uh, stuff inside. See, that'll cut all the plastic away. I don't know what's in here, so I'm still trying to be a little bit careful. So I'm just using the knife as needed. I'm changing up my grips, the forward grip, using the guard, the fine grip. Cut everything away that I don't want to have to look at. I'm going to do a downward cut, so I'm going to change the grip to a thumb on top and utilize the guard. So we just had four strands of, uh, um, of like coaxial cable, you know, copper, some sort of metal inside. Uh, one, two, three, four, five strands. No edge deformation. Cut right through that. Now I can pretty much go ahead and search this as needed. You know, I could take the speaker out, whatever. So like I said, I want to protect the edge because it's primarily a cutting tool, not a prying tool, but it will pry if you need it to. And we'll do some more demonstrations with that on around the vehicle. All right, so moving on, some of the other cutting tasks. Moving around the vehicle here, anything can be hidden in the rear compartment. Uh, carpet can be taken out, all this plastic can come off. Everything can be replaced to hide whatever the bad guys are trying to hide. So let's, let's look at uh, some of the cutting features here of this knife. So I've got a standard uh, uh, rear carpet here with the plastic's been replaced on it. Um, I'm not even gonna try to pry this off. I'm just gonna go straight for the carpet. So I'm gonna use a reverse grip or a, uh, a finger on top of the spine grip so the guard is protecting the rest of my hand. I'm just gonna kind of baton it in and then I'm just gonna do a, a straight pull across this is pretty heavy carpet, but you can see it cuts it pretty much, I hate the old term, but like butter. It's kind of like skinning a game animal. Uh, if you were coming up under, the, uh, from the, uh, up the center line of a game animal on their stomach, if you're gonna have to uh, gut a game animal. It's pretty much the same, similar. I had a pretty, uh, pretty low angle, so I'm not jamming the tip of the blade. Like I said, I'm protecting my tool. I don't know what's under here, metal. So I had a pretty shallow angle and it just ripped that carpet right out. Underlayment comes right out. I'm gonna switch over to a uh, um, high on the Ricasso using my forefinger there. Some fine cutting, get it out of there. Now I can pretty much start the search of this vehicle. This all comes out. And I can start doing what I need to do. Um, some of the other stuff I would normally do in the rear vehicle, any of these panels, I want to protect my tip, but sometimes you got to use it. So I'm going to baton it in there. I can turn it over if that doesn't suit me. Pop that right open. Obviously, this is for demonstration purposes. Could I just hit the buttons and open it right up? Sure. This is just to show you can pry with this knife if you protect the cutting edge and the tip. Um, when would I pry? When I only have to pry. So just like I was talking about the seat belt. When would I cut the seat belt? Only when I have to. So this vehicle could be wrecked, it could be rolled over, it could be, had been shot up, um, and all those locking features be damaged and I have to pry. So always pry as a secondary use. All right, so far today we've talked about all the aspects of using this, uh, the Goodman knife, to uh, search a vehicle, whether that's military applications or law enforcement applications. We've talked about, just to recap, we've talked about uh, extraction. Uh, the car's uh, mangled up, you gotta cut somebody out of a seat belt, extract them out. We've talked about searching the vehicle seats, using the knife properly, protecting the cutting edge versus just you know, going no holds barred and, uh, and destroying your knife. Primarily, it's a cutting tool. Secondary, it can be used to pry. We've talked about cutting and prying off the, uh, the skins of the vehicle, and we could 
we can sit out here all day, and but we've demonstrated that on the doors. It works great. We've cut, talked about cutting carpet because that can be taken out and stuff can be hidden under there and then replaced to look like it's never even, never even been touched. And uh, we've talked about prying off panels in the back also. Um, moving on around the vehicle, what we're going to do next is we're going to pry open the glove box. I, I stress again, first and foremost, check to see if it's open. It's open, right? So this is just a demonstration. The car has been uh, stopped or it's been flipped or rolled over and you have to go to the prying. Uh, I, I stress, only pry when it's needed. So again, just with all the other cutting chores, I'm not just willy-nilly gonna just jam the knife into any part of this uh, and start prying. I've already checked it, it won't open. Um, I wanna protect the cutting edge. I wanna protect the tip of my cutting tool. I've decided I'm gonna have to pry with it. So I check, just like I did on the other panels, where is the most tension at? Obviously it's gonna be on the lock. Uh, but there could be other, uh, other, other studs in here or something that, that is holding this down. So I'm just going to pry my way in. Um, I can choose to go cutting, uh, cutting edge up or cutting edge down. As long as I'm protecting it, I'm just going to kind of use a left hand grip. I'm just going to baton it in there slowly. Now I'm moving it over. I'm checking, okay, this side's not, uh, not caught up with anything. Seems like the locking mechanism is in the center just as it shows. I'm do the same over here. I'm going to pry it in a little bit. Yep. So most of my tension's on the center. So I'm going to come back in with the knife. Tap, tap, tap. Try to get in there as deep as I can. I can use an upward pressure or a downward. Let's see. I think I'm going to have to use downward. Somewhere here in the middle. Got to get something for the knife to catch on without disturbing my tip. So I'm just working it around. I've got time. We're in a secure location. Pry that down, get a finger bite. Come around here. There we go. got a bite on it. I'm going to use it to hold pressure while I put pressure down. So I protected my edge. Looks good. No cutting edge deformation. And we got into the glove box. Let's see what kind of damage we did here. So we figured out from coming in from the edges that this was loose. And obviously the locking mechanism is in the center. Um, most of these are going to be plastic nowadays. The old, if you find yourself in an old vehicle, it could be metal. So you don't want to go metal on metal with that cutting edge unless you absolutely have to. So that's why you saw me trying to work to each side of where I had figured out the main lock was. So I'm trying to work the knife down into these places, pry it out where I can get a hand on it. What I ended up doing was I'm holding pressure on it with this, and I just gave it a hit. It's like if you were trying to open a door. If you put pressure on it and push it, it's going to open readily easier than if you know if you're trying to push it in the middle where all the slack was so same principle on this that's it for that all right moving on let's talk about some of the uh, other aspects and the features of, of the goodman knife the a lot of times when you find yourself in military law, law enforcement applications you're gonna have to extract someone from a vehicle they don't want to get out you got to break the glass and make them come out so a lot of knives on the market, um, you know, they, they like to put at the end of the knife a, a point or something because they think that's going to help to assist in glass break. It's not. I mean, uh, there's lots of other ways that you can break glass um, that I won't get into that are, uh, you know, a little more clandestine. But on this blade itself, we left the uh, exposed steel of the full tang uh, that's rounded and it sticks out approximately a quarter of an inch, a little less than a quarter of an inch. Um, the handle's G10. It's set up at the correct angles to where the handle's not gonna get bashed if you come in at a straight uh, 90 degree angle on the glass. And uh, I've done this hundreds and hundreds, uh, hundreds of times uh, in combat situations. So it works. The biggest thing, the biggest misconception 
you know, the, like I said, you got to have something pointed uh, to break glass. You don't. A pointed object, if you mount it on your vest or on your hip and your sheath, it could be close to your face. You could be moving. It could get uh, uh, impaled on you if you're wearing it on your strong side, as I'm right-handed, or on your weak side, and you're, you're leaning and moving, running, jumping, uh, whatever you're doing in those applications. If something sharp was back there, you're gonna get hurt. So everything on this knife, as we talked about before, has been blended, rounded, and everything has a purpose. There's nothing on here that is not functional. There's no bells and whistles. Everything designed into this, as we have talked about, is pure functionality. So on the glass break, a lot of people think uh, glass is very easy to break. It's not. Uh, they, you know, they think, oh, it's just glass. I can just walk up and throw a rock at it. It's not easy to break. Why is that? Why is it not easy to break? Oh my gosh, that's glass. Bullets can skip off glass at the right angles. A rifle fired from a, an AR type weapon, 5.56, can bounce off the front glass at the correct angle. So. Glass is a funny thing, especially modern glass. And you'll find all different kinds of glass across the, across the world, different grades. Uh, but modern glass is very tough to break unless you know where to hit it. So the reason it doesn't break in the center, because if you notice, there's a lot of give. There's a lot of give there. A lot of give in the center, and especially in the rear glass, a lot of give. I mean, I can actually move the vehicle with it, and the, the glass is moving under the force of my hand. So, Glass break, you want to look where the glass is really tight. Where is it tight? This is good, this is okay, this is bad, this is bad. Your tightest points where the glass is coming up out of the, uh, uh, protruding from the vehicle here out of the door face. So here and here, 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 anywhere in here like that is going to be your best chance. Here, this is going to be kind of hard because you got the mirror in the way. So this is a good spot. It's pretty tight and you can check that. I mean, it's nothing, it's not rocket science. That's super tight. It's not going to take a lot of effort if you know where to, to hit it just with this small rounded feature. Okay, for glass break, as we were talking about before, you want a proper grip on the knife. So that's why one of the other features we always roll back to is the full guard. Glass break we talked about behind there. So I've got these super thick gloves on and I've still got plenty of clearance there but, uh, where the, uh, the palm of my hand is and the glass break sticking out. <clears throat> Choked up all the way to the guard, I have maximum protection. I can go to the front of the G10 here and roll my thumb up on that little lip there, which gives me a little more leverage. When I'm going to strike the glass, like I said before, I'm going to strike it in the hardest point of the glass. This is soft, this is soft, mushy, however you want to talk about it. It's loose. This is super tight. This is tight. For this window right here, this is the tightest point. Obviously, in a tactical situation, I'm not going to walk up and check the glass. I already know where to hit it at because I've done this you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. All right, now we're going to break the glass. Okay, here we are again talking about glass break. Let's talk about uh, the first one we broke on the rear passenger or the rear driver's side. I did the full wind up just to show you force is going to break it. Hitting it in the right position with the right tool is going to break it. So let's talk about uh, taking it down a notch, how much force does it take using the proper tool? Um, I'm going to choose what I think is the hardest point again. As I said, in a tactical situation, I'm not going to walk up and start pressing on the window. I've trained on this in the past, done it live multiple times, and uh, I know where to strike it. If I can't get it to break in that position, I'll use more force or I'll move to another hard point on the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off using the lightest amount of force I can and we'll see how much force it does take to make this tool break the window. Okay, now I'm gonna break it. Okay, I'm gonna move to a different position. I don't like that one. So as you can see, the front glass took a lot more force than the rear glass. So I started off here in the front, getting a lot of give here. Moved to the rear, got some give here, checked it again, and finally found a spot where I could get the glass out. So, once again, in the middle, it's not really gonna break. So you gotta find those corner positions and just keep working at it to get it to break. Uh, a final thought here, uh, you know, disabling vehicles. There's a lot of 
uh, a lot of dis discussion on that. One of the easiest ways to disable a vehicle so it can't be used quickly again against you, someone following you, like I said, this is primarily in a military application, um, is to uh, just take the tires out. You know, you can, you can take the keys, you can take, uh, you know, rip all the uh, electronics out from under the hood. But if you really want to quickly disable a vehicle, uh, a lot of times we would just, uh, uh, you know, stab all the tires. Uh, the, this is not a tactical discussion today. This is just another uh, uh, another shearing up of the qualities of this blade. Uh, you know, it can it will defeat very heavy rubber, and the tip uh, will not deform. So, for doing something like this, I'd want to go ahead and go with reverse grip, utilizing the uh, guard again. Because why do we put a guard on knives? If it didn't have a guard and I stabbed something hard and we didn't have that guard protecting my hand, my hand could slide up over the blade and, and cut myself. So that's why this knife has a guard for all these cutting chores uh, and prying that we've been doing today. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, stab the tire. So that little bit of rubber gives no problem uh, to this blade. No tip deformation whatsoever. Okay, let's talk about and recap some of the uh, capabilities that we've demonstrated here today um, with this knife. Like I said before, PD-1 steel, um, heat treated to our specifications, tempered six times, um, uh, differentially hardened, very, very strong knife. We've uh, cut seat belt material, simulating extraction someone in extremist times. We have uh, broke glass, we have um, cut out the seats of the vehicle uh, for vehicle searches. We have uh, pried the door uh, panels off during vehicle searches. We've cut the carpet out. Uh, we've pried uh, panels off in the back, moved around to the right side of the vehicle, passenger side, and we've opened the glove box, all without any edge deformation or tip deformation. We've also we disabled the vehicle by uh, stabbing into the rubber. Um, no edge deformation there. Um, and, and finally, uh, high endurance, that's what it's all about. The Lou Goodman Special Operations Combat Knife. Looks good.